Hey everyone, JSD Cool here, and welcome to another Monotram tutorial video. In this video, I will be showing you how to program your Monotrams. So, first, start by, you know, building your track and stuff. But after that, spawn in your Monotram Tram Mark II and place it on the track. It's also handy if you mark where you're placing it on the track, like I did here, for easy replacement on the track later. After that, place it on the track, and if, the, and if you're reprogramming one that you've already programmed, make sure you go under it and make sure you press E on this block here to make sure that the current data point is set to zero. After that, simply get in and close the door behind you, although that is technically optional. Once you're inside, the front car that is, you will notice a few things. First of all, there's a whole bunch of buttons here in the front, I'm getting to that. Um, second of all, it's the seats, after all this is supposed to be public transport, and then there is also a number of displays up here on the walls. These number displays display the current data point that the train is on, for your convenience essentially. Now, this button here is the go button. This button will start the train in to run in automatic mode, however if you don't have anything programmed then it won't do anything if you turn this on. Next, down here there's a whole bunch of buttons at the ground. The red switch here is to turn on record mode. We will be doing that momentarily. The, I guess this is maroon switch here, button even, this button here is to record the current state of these four, uh, these four inputs right here directly to memory in the current data point that we're at. This is in case you made, you've made a mistake when you're recording and you're going through it later and you wish to adjust your speed or switch position. Speaking of which, these three buttons right here correspond to three separate speeds that this thing is defaultly programmed to go at. Slow, medium, and fast. Which I will be referring, referring to as speeds 1, 2, and 3. Right next to that is this magenta switch. This magenta switch controls which controls the switch, I guess, switcher, as what you would call it. And this essentially is going to tell a switch when you roll over it, if you're coming from the direction that you can switch tracks, which direct whether it should switch tracks or keep you on the same track. All these buttons are also accessible from the seat, with buttons 1, 2, and 3 speed being speeds 1, 2, and 3, button 4 being the switch position, button 5 being the right now button, and button 6 being the turning on recording mode button. I'm going to do that now. Beware that once you turn the recording button off, it will automatically reset the train to data point zero. I will now start moving on the track uh, about speed three here until I get to this data point up here, in which case I will slow down to speed two, as taking a curve at speed three will usually cause your train to tip over. If it doesn't, you are very lucky. Now. I will hold speed 2 until I get within the station block. As as mentioned before in the data point video, your you will record to a data point after you pass the data point itself. Meaning that if I'm holding button number 1 as I go over this data point up here, which by the way you do have to go at a speed of 1 in the station in order to fully stop. So if I'm holding a speed of 2 here, after I go over this data point, the, the block of that switch there, or the data point of that switch there, will be set as speed 2. So again, as I'm approaching the next data point somewhere along here at this up at this curve, when I'm holding 2, the data point that I'm in right now will now be written to 2 as a 2, and that will also be written as a 2, and now this is written as a 3, and vice versa. This is also very versatile. I'm also going to turn on number four now to t tell it that at the next switch we do want to switch tracks. And S-bends can be taken at a speed of three. And again, stations do have to be taken at a speed of one. Notice that the I am going the speed that I want to go in the block. When I'm in a block, I'm going to be going the speed that I want to be going inside of that block. Another thing is switches is recommended to be taken at a speed of two. Otherwise, you may confuse, you may arrive at the actual switching section before it switches, which may be a problem, <laughs> but it completely depends on you. 
and I will simply now time lapse the rest of me recording this. You can obviously see down at the bottom of the screen which buttons I'm pressing if you're curious at that moment that I'm pressing it. And after this I will time lapse you through the process of me actually riding this train. Alright, I have now cycled all the way around the track to the same exact data point location that I started in. I'm currently at 29 data points, however, when I flick this red switch to off, it will reset me to data, it will automatically reset me to data point zero. I can now press this button and it will autonomously drive around the track based on what I have told it to do. And as you can see, it does not take this switch. And also, I will say that at when I was coming when I was merging back onto the main track over that way, you may have seen what is going to be a set is a prototype version of the new switch systems that I'm working on for slightly down the road. Anyhow, every time a train stops at a station, it'll stop for 30 seconds. You can see the timer there, which is counting down. So I'm going to time lapse through this now. Alright everybody, it has made a full revolution around the track, and now this is going to be the end of this. Hopefully this helped you use the system better. Um, uh, thank you for watching, and this has been a Monotramp tutorial. Bye.